Plenty of time. There's a whole minute left.
everyone. My name is Seth Dubert, and to my left over here is Monica B, Kara Miller, and Mike Stan. And tonight we're going to talk about for the glory of Walmart. Now, when you think of Walmart, what do you think of? Anybody? On tonight's agenda, Mike Scam and Monica Fink are going to talk about the theory of Walmart. And after that, Monica is going to talk about discount stores. And then I'm going to talk about Sam's Clubs. And then after that, it's going to be Kara Miller that's going to talk about Walmart Super Centers. And then Mike Scam is going to talk about International and then Beyond the Case. And then Kara is going to sum it up with the glory of Walmart. Now Mike's going to go ahead and start it off for us with the theory. Thank you, Seth. Resource-based view of the firm, or RBV, is an approach that views a company's resources as the building blocks to a competitive advantage. A resource-based approach can be used to analyze a company's strategy. A company sustains their competitive advantage by utilizing their resources effectively. Resources are an organization's assets to be exploited. They can be physical, technological, intellectual, etc. Capabilities are an organization's ability to exploit these resources effectively. Core competencies are capabilities that a firm performs especially well relative to others. Distinctive competencies are core competencies that are superior to those of the competition. Business model is a company's method for making in the current business environment. It outlines how a company can earn revenue and make a profit. It is defined by four elements. Who it serves, what it provides, how it makes money, and how it will provide its product or service. A company must answer four questions to find these four elements. Who is the customer? What does the customer value? How is the value going to be delivered to the customer? And how is the business going to make money? Strategy is a comprehensive plan that states how a company will achieve its mission and objectives. A strategy describes how a business will do better than the competition. A clear plan is an important resource for a company's growth. A growth strategy is used to expand a company's activities, including sales and determining numbers of locations. Next, Monica is going to talk to us about the value chain. Thank you, Mike. A value chain is a set of value-adding activities. There are two different value chains to be considered for our discussion. An analysis of the corporate value chain can allow us a better understanding of a firm's strengths and weaknesses. We can determine which activities are strengths or core competencies and which activities are weaknesses or core deficiencies. We can also analyze the interactions between the activities on the value chain to understand where our costs lie, where we can find economies of scope, and where we can find cost reduction. The support activities up top, such as firm infrastructure, technology development, and procurement, enhance the primary activities inbound logistics, operations, outbound logistics, marketing and sales, and service. Now a company has an inter or has a um, an area of expertise along an industry value chain. This is its center of gravity. This is where its core competencies lie. It's what it does best on that value chain. When looking when a firm finds its center of gravity and establishes a competitive advantage on the value chain, it moves forward and backward along that value chain looking to cut costs effectively reduce that value chain, cutting those costs and, de and determining their distinctive competencies, and then pass that on to the customer. Now let's look at how Walmart does it. Walmart first identifies an underserved target market. They do this by answering the first two questions of the business model. Who is the customer and what's the customer value? Next, they pursue aggressive growth. They do this by defining a clear strategy, in this case aggressive growth, and carefully address the business model to its target market. By doing so, the business model and strategy both become important resources for Walmart. Next, they capitalize on the competencies to create value. They determine their distinctive competencies, logistics, purchasing, and technology. They utilize those in the value chain to reduce costs, and then they pass that on to the customer. As their markets approach saturation, they look to, two, to new target markets for growth. So let's look at how they do it with discounts. Discount stores came into play in the early 50s. Um, this is when super, they took the supermarket concept and they took this to 
general merchandise. They sold products at low margins, typically between 10 to 15 percent lower than their general merchandise competitors. Sam Walton started his, his ventures with discount stores with his franchise in Ben Franklin. Now he sparked the idea of bringing discount stores to small towns, but Ben Franklin organization turned him down. So with his entrepreneurial spirit, Sam partnered with his brother Bud and came up with 95 percent of the capital to open the first Walmart city discount store in 1962. By 1969, Walmart was incorporated. Sam really bought into creating discount stores to rural, rural areas, and he wanted to base this all on value. So he built Walmart on value, and there's still things today that are present. For instance, uh, when their associates have their, their meetings right before they go out on the floor, they do a cheer to end it off, to inspire them to bring value to their customers and always keep the customer first. They've been doing this throughout the history of Walmart and they're still doing it today. I think that's pretty significant to speak to the value that they're looking to bring. Now let's look at who the customer is for discount stores. Small towns not being served by the discount stores. What do these customers value? Quality products at low price. So as they pursue a growth strategy, um, they look to look locating these discount stores in their target market. These customers right now have to travel at this time, have to travel to cities to be able to purchase at low price. By bringing and locating the stores in those towns, Walmart offers them the advantage and convenience of being able to shop at that low price, which is in turn a value to the customer. They also are very strategic with their pricing strategies. They looked at their specific demographics within a market and looked at what they, to, to obtain a, the best price in that market. For instance, if they had a competitor next, to, next door to them in a small town, they would price specifically compared to that competitor. But in looking at Walmart stores where they may not have a competitor, they were about 6% higher than those stores that did. So they really could take advantage of that pricing strategy by localizing that and then tailoring it to that specific market. They were also very strategic in their pattern of setting it, their pattern of expansion with infrastructure. They placed stores and distribution centers, always building them from the inside out, kind of like a spider web. So they always looked to grow in that aspect. And land that they always looked to build upon always allowed them um, to, to future that expansion. So they're always looking towards growth. How does Walmart add value to the customer? They focus on their logistics, technology, and purchasing in the company value chain. <coughs> How do they make money? They capitalize on distinctive competencies that allow Walmart to cut back on costs. So let's look at logistics. This is a industry value chain. As you can see, there's several processes in the industry value chain. Raw materials to manufacturing, to fabrication, to distribution, to retail. As a product moves through this value chain it, and goes through every process, cost is added to, to get to the end cost to the customer. Through logistics and their own distribution network, Walmart is able to reduce this value chain because they make themselves their own distributor. So they take this out of the equation, effectively reducing the cost lower than that of their competitor, Kmart. So now let's look at purchasing. Walmart is a industry leader in a lot of ways in technology. I'm sorry, let's look at technology. Walmart is an industry leader in a lot of ways, and technology is one of those. They introduced UPC codes two years ahead of their competitors. What UPC codes allow them to do is find efficiency within their own system. A lot of the inventory management and the pricing associates did by hand prior to UPCs. UPCs allowed them to bring that in and, and computerize that and capture a lot of information. So they found efficiencies within their own network, reducing their costs, and they can pass that on to their customers. Now let's look at purchasing. In this era, part of why they, the reason why they set up their distribution networks is they had a problem with suppliers coming in and bringing products to them. So there's a lot of cost of getting their suppliers to bring the product to these rural areas. They set up their distribution warehouse to eliminate that, but it also allowed them an advantage in purchasing. They're able to buy at volume prices, volume, buy in volume at attractive prices, and take advantage of economies of scale. They use their own warehouses to distribute these out to the store. Now, the, the distribution warehouses are located central to the stores that they service, creating a hub and wheel um, network. Geographic 
Market and Sam's Club Super Center. And now I'll turn it over to Seth to talk about Sam's Club. Thank you, Monica. Now the picture that you see behind me is the first Sam's Club that was built back in 1983. Now this was actually pioneered by Price Clubs, which is a warehouse type of building. Now, Price Clubs, they used a high volume, low cost merchandising, which resulted in reducing handling costs. They also leveraged their buying power, which would, in return, it would um, pass the savings on to the customers. So, they also used um, minimal SKUs, which were, which were uh, stock keeping units, which resulted in high turnover rate. Now, who was Sam's Club's customer? Sam's Club's customer were business owners or operators. Now, they had two types of memberships at this time. There were individual memberships and business memberships. Now, 70% of Sam's Club's memberships comprised of business owners or operators. And also, the memberships comprised about two-thirds of their operating profits as well. Now, what does the customer value? Like what Monica was mentioning earlier about Walmart discount stores, they value quality products at a low price. Now, in Sam's Club's case, it was name brand merchandise at wholesale prices. Now, Sam's Club's strategy was actually to open up their clubs aggressively and rapidly throughout. Now, what this did, it would, it would help future competition because they would, they actually opened up 419 clubs. So, the reason why they did this was to deter competition and also make it less attractive for new entrants. Now, how was value added for the customer? Sam's would like to add the value by focusing on logistics, technology, and purchasing just like they did for the Walmart discount stores. Now, how did they make money? They also made money by focusing on the logistics, technology, and purchasing as well in order for them to cut back their costs and then add value to the customers. Now let's talk about logistics. Now at this time around when Sam's Club was open, cross docking was introduced. And what this was, it took inbound vehicles to dispatch goods to the store bound vehicles to retail stores. Now in order for this, they Doing this enabled goods to be dispatched from the manufacturer to the distribution center while simultaneously being repacked and sent out to the retail store. Now let's talk about technology. Now at this time in 1983, when Samsung was actually opening up, they also introduced the satellite systems as well. And they used this to communicate across the locations throughout. Now this also enabled managers in all the clubs to take a look at the merchandise to see if it was low, if it was moving slowly throughout the club. It also helped them to see if there's any kind of overstocking in the club or if there was any kind of deep discounting. Now, a little while later down the road, a product, a, a technology called electronic data interchange, also known as EDI, was introduced. It, was, it helped vendors communicate with Walmart electronically and also to see if they needed to order any of their products. Now let's take a look at purchasing. Sam's Club received about 70% of their products via direct shipments from their suppliers, and the rest was actually from their own distribution center. Now Sam's Club used the high volume, low cost merchandising like they had from the price clubs. Now it was also called bulk ordering. So, they also had uh, a limited amount of SKUs, which were the stock keeping units, throughout the club as well. Now, doing this would actually minimize the cost of goods sold and then pass the savings along to the members or customers, like what Mike was mentioning earlier. Now, for an example, let's say, well, I don't know, an uh, IUSB professor would want to shop and get boxes and boxes of Kleenex to hand out to all of the students if he was providing them feedback on their table projects. Or let's say if uh, he was really hungry because he was bombarded by students all day and uh, didn't have anything to eat, so he wanted to get a big box of Snickers 
to get at a, a wholesale price at Sam's Club. And then let's say that uh, he wanted to wash that Snickers down because he was really thirsty with a nice Diet Coke at a cheap price. You get it for like 32 bucks at Sam's Club. So by investing in and utilizing these technologies, that about the five, the 3,500 SKUs that I mentioned earlier, in a in pallet size quantities in a no frills warehouse type building, Sam's Club was able to enhance high volume and low in the low cost model. Now, as the market was saturating, Sam's Club was actually nearly twice the size of Price Club. Now, because of this, Price Club actually merged together with Costco at this time, which is known as Price Costco. Now, after this happened, Sam's Club was actually, the reason why when I talked about earlier when they opened up 419 clubs was in a kind of a result of the Price Club and Costco and Price Club Costco had 206 stores in the throughout the whole area. <clears throat> so because of Price Club and, and Costco opening or merging together and Sam's Club's uh, clubs opening, they produced overcapacity. And this also generated increased competition. So in a result, Walmart started looking into the super centers a little bit more deeply. So now we'll care as we talk about super centers. Thank you, Seth. Super centers took the discount store concept and added in a section for groceries. Stores such as Meyer and Fred Meyer had already seen success with this model. So Walmart decides to try their hand at it in 1987. This allows Walmart to grow their sales by retaining their current discount sales and adding in sales from groceries. The underserved market in this segment is low-income families and individuals who are currently only being served by much higher priced grocery stores. This customer still values quality products at a low price, and Walmart is able to grow their sales by adding in new customers who may not shop at discount stores currently. Walmart's focus on growth sets them up for this change, as Monica mentioned earlier, Walmart continually looked to expand their stores, so when they were looking for land to build or to lease property, they looked with the intent to expand and therefore were able to do so with limited capital investment. They started with the oldest discount stores where they already had a well-established reputation and worked their way through their network of stores. To deliver value to the customer, Walmart continues to capitalize on their distinctive competencies, logistics, technology, and purchasing. As they are able to cut back costs, we see that they provide the lowest price to consumers and therefore achieve a profit through volume. Let's look at logistics and their expansion in 1993. They added more than 1 million square feet to their current distribution centers and opened new locations in Arizona, Utah, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. They also invested a significant amount into technology. In fact, between 1987 and 1993, they spent more than $700 million in expanding their satellite system, buying computers, and other related equipment. By continuing to invest and develop these distinctive competencies, Walmart remains the market leader and ahead of their competition. In purchasing, we see that Walmart's size now gives them a huge advantage. They are really able to realize their economies of scale at this point. No supplier accounted for more than 2.4% of Walmart's sales, or rather purchasing, at this time. So Walmart is really able to set the standards. They set strict standards as far as quality and delivery of their products. And we all know what is the number two worst thing for a manufacturer. Come on, people. To have Walmart as a customer. To have Walmart, Walmart as a customer. And what's the number one worst thing? sales, or rather they should want the sales, 
and they need to comply to Walmart's strict standards. For example, we can look at Gitano. In the early 90s, Walmart accounted for more than 26% of their sales. When they failed to comply with Walmart's strict standards, they lost that customer and were forced into bankruptcy. Another key step that Walmart takes in purchasing during this time period is to cut out manufacturing reps from the negotiations. They also move negotiations from offices to rooms set aside for negotiations, which often only included a table and some chairs. This cuts out all of the family photos or other personal memorabilia that would be in one's office. By doing this, Walmart eliminates the personal relationship that often occurs between purchasing agents and sales reps. By making it a strictly business transaction, Walmart was able to reduce their costs by 3.4%. In this discount store concept and supercenter store concept, this is a significant cost reduction. So by capitalizing on these competencies, Walmart is able to grow their supercenters, and in fact in 1993, they more than double the amount of supercenters they have in the U.S. They operate in 47 states and begin to realize that they may need to look internationally for continued growth. Now, Mike will tell us a little bit more about how they started that process and a little bit about where they are today. Thank you, Tara. In 1991, um, Walmart began to look for new markets as the domestic market, as Tara stated, reached saturation. Walmart did this for one main reason, and that was the international market provided Walmart with virtually limitless opportunities for expansion. And the international market comprised of many different markets for Walmart to expand into and utilize these underserved markets and use their distinctive competencies to kind of test them out and see if it's something that would work for them. So later, in 1991, Walmart looked at Mexico. They entered Mexico via a joint venture with Cipra. Walmart looked at a joint venture over an all-out acquisition, like they've done in some of the domestic markets, because a joint venture provided them kind of a limited liability approach to it. They didn't have to invest as many resources and capital into doing it, and it kind of gave them the opportunity to test the market before going all out. Walmart's first store was a Sam's Club in Mexico City. Walmart was doing really successful in Mexico, and by 1997, they had acquired a majority stakeholder in Cipra. And by 2000, they had acquired all of Cipra and changed the name to Walmart de Mexico. So after, an, after a good expansion into Mexico, Walmart, in 1994, decided to look at Canada for expansion. They decided to take a different approach on this, and they entered Canada all through acquisition of Woolco stores. They favored an acquisition in this, this time because Canada was already familiar with the Superstore concept, and this allowed Walmart to rapidly penetrate the market and piggyback off of an already existing brand and customer loyalty. And it also allowed them an already established framework and distribution network that they could link to their current North American network so they could have greater efficiencies. Very little information was provided in the case as to how Walmart used their resources and distinctive competencies in the international market. So to expand upon the message, we're going to go a little bit beyond the case now. So I just want to point out a few things in this chart. I know it's a little busy, but here, Walmart sales were about $201 billion, and that is 2002. By 2012, they were able to more than double that. 443 billion. And at the bottom here, you can see that in 2000, they had a little over 4,000 units worldwide. By 2012, they were able to expand that to over 10,000. Now, if you stop and think about that and that time frame, that's a little over building two stores a day. So, as you can see in this other chart over here, their stores by square foot had a great peak in this time period. Today, Walmart's new customer is the growing middle class. What does this customer value? While they still value quality products at a low price, they also tend to look for a shopping experience. In 2006, Walmart took steps to expand its U.S. customer base by changing
using its one-size-fits-all strategy they had originally been using and catering just to low-income families. Walmart felt by customizing these stores to the different demographics, they could serve more customers <coughs> and open up whole new underserved markets for themselves. To accomplish this goal, they changed a few things and in essence did a rebranding. Now we're going to take a second here and look at a commercial that clearly shows their um, prior to the rebranding that they had a major focus on low prices.
What are your thoughts now? Anyone? Uh, logistics, they concentrate on logistics and use that to um, keep costs low. That's right. Higher quality. Anyone else? Come on, you don't have any thoughts about, like, we just told you so much about Walmart.